Hi guys, it's a new day and it's a new Ali X album. This is super exciting for me because I actually discovered Ali X's music on my channel. If you were unaware, I did her entire discography minus Cape God and I'm really excited to now be experiencing an album from her in real time. We are going to be checking out Girl With No Face. It just came out 10 minutes ago, fully like prepped and ready to go. I covered all the singles on my channel, so I feel like I said a lot in those videos. I'm gonna try to keep this intro short, but I'll just say that I really love the whole vibe of this album so far. I'm loving the synths, I'm loving the energy, I'm loving everything that we've gotten so far. I'm really feeling like this could definitely be my album sonically. Ali X produced and wrote this album all by herself, which makes me have just a lot more respect for her. It makes me so much more excited too, because anytime I know that an artist was like really heavily in Involved, it just instantly piques my curiosity. It really feels like personal work that came from their heart and soul. And like, I do think she had say in her other albums, but this might be her first album that was ever done completely by herself. So that makes me really excited. Ali X is extremely underrated. Like she is literally holding up the community of dark pop right now and we should all be so grateful. So let's get into the first track. It is called Weird World. I know this was released like yesterday. I did not listen to it. I heard a little snippet on Instagram Instagram, but honestly, I tried to not listen to intently. She said this song is a slap in the face, so I am fully ready to be slapped. I have literally not been able to make out a single word of this. Oh, hail Satan. No. Why? And then she sung in German, I believe. Uh, I used to be a dream girl, but the world interfered. I think that's definitely the lyric that stands out the most from this. My <laughs> Sounds like she's getting out weapons and like <laughs> throwing them around. <laughs> I'll never wake in heaven because heaven don't want women. Children, father figure, mother, daughter, hooker, stripper. I mean, I would guess it's about how the world treats women, at least in the chorus when she says, you know, I used to be a dream girl. Like I used to be the dream. I used to be, I don't know. I just was the it girl, but now the world has interfered. And in verse two, you know, again, that sexism concept, heaven doesn't want women, mother, daughter, hooker, stripper. Definitely sounds like it's referring to how women are portrayed. I don't know. I used to be a dream okay. Ali X actually made a comment about this song. Weird World coincided with the decision I had to make a lot of changes and transitions both creatively and within my business. The weird world is the idea of seeing things as they actually are and how that can actually be an empowering moment even though it's a sad moment. I used to be a dream girl. So maybe I used to be a dream girl is referring to her Cape Cod period. You know, when she's talking about like creative transitions and transitions in her business, like that would be a really stressful thing to have to do. Like, especially after I think, I wanna say Cape God was one of her more like popular albums or maybe it was like her most commercially successful album. And so going from that into like, maybe she doesn't wanna do that same sound again or maybe she wants to do something different. You know, that is such a nerve wracking thing for any type of creative to do, to like change something that they do. You know, you wanna please people, you want people to like your music or your art or whatever you're doing, but you also at the end of the day have to focus on what you wanna do. And it's this constant battle of like, do I wanna, do I do what I want to do or do I do what everyone else wants me to do? I definitely think 
it, you know, it's one of those songs that could make me think for a long time, just like the other singles. It's definitely a thinker. Um, I don't know how I felt about it yet, like sonically. Sonically, probably my least favorite of the singles. Um, I definitely didn't connect with it on the same level as the other singles. Um, but the next song is Girl With No Face which I covered on my channel. I'm probably gonna breeze through these next two and then just go into John and Jonathan. Obviously I did videos on all the singles. So like, if you want my in-depth thoughts, just go there. <laughs> I'm really hoping for more like heavy bass, bass lines and synths on this album. That's the best part. So I'm with the girl, she can ruin your world, don't get in her way. I kind of love screaming Ali X. Like it kind of gives me life. Um, okay, off with her tits. Yeah, this was probably my favorite of the singles. I think it still is. How can I escape? Doesn't matter what I do, I'm filled up with her hate. Don't take the piss, I'm fuck with a whip. Off with the tits. Off with the tits. Oh, that's something I didn't realize before, but when she says off with her tits, there's a background vocal that's like tits, 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 tits. So. <laughs> Yeah, I, um, yeah, I absolutely love that song. And if that song is not, you know, in, in the top five, top three of my ranking, I would be concerned. But the next one is called John and Jonathan. I don't know why I'm like picturing a ballad, but I just heard the beginning of that synth and it's definitely not a ballad. Ugh, girl with her face and off with her tits, like back to back like that. That was rude. Halloween. <gasps> oh, okay, she said John and Jonathan were on the town at the Bowery and line they wait. I believe that's a bar and I only know that because of Taylor Swift. They will stay all night and then wake at eight. That makes no sense. If they stay all night, then they're not waking up at eight. They're still at the bar at eight. <laughs> Her lyrics are so interesting that I'm constantly like wondering what she's gonna say next. John and Jonathan. I really like that John and Jonathan. John likes coffee bag. And John. Parlay. Parlay. They must have taste. <laughs> this one's throwing me off a little bit just because I feel like there's a lot of different vibes present. There's the synth, which I really love. There's then the darker, like more Halloween scent that came in that felt like a totally different vibe. It feels like this song is getting darker as it goes. There's obviously like the John and Jonathan section, the verses, absolutely love it. I love that melody. And then there's this chorus that just came in, which is super interesting lyrically. I'm gonna go ahead and say I don't love the sound of it. Like I don't love that she kind of changed it up in that way and made it this high pitched chorus. Anyway, this is really interesting because she's describing what sounds like a gay couple, John and Jonathan, they're out on the town, they go up, they go down, they're at the cafe, they're of high taste. But it, what's interesting to me is her saying, how will I know if they care for me? Do I believe what they say? So, you know, it could be about how her fan base gives her all this praise, but she doesn't always feel that good about herself. Do I believe that my music really is good because these people think that my music is good. I kind of have to internalize their praise and save it for when I'm not feeling so good about myself. And I think that's a really interesting concept for a song. Do I believe that my art is good because people like it? Or do I have to get that validation from within? You know, I don't know. There's a lot of ways you could take that. <laughs> Love that synth. Is the rest of the song just an instrumental? There's something really like secretive and mysterious about the way she says that. I mean, it's probably because she's whispering it. Love that. I 
love the verses or the like the refrain part that keeps coming back. That's definitely my favorite part of the song. I really liked that one. I'm really glad that I liked that one because after Weird World, you know, I was a bit scared because <laughs> I really love her synths and I really like the heavy production that she's using, but I really love that one. I don't know that I needed like that entire synth breakdown to be as long as it was, but I'm not mad about it because at least there was synths. <laughs> I just love her synth. Okay, Galena, I don't know who that is. We're just gonna get synthy dark dance pop perfection with this. There's a secret in me. I will never tell. This is so like mysterious again with the vocals. Galena, wake up. No, you don't give a fuck. Still, it reminds me of Stranger Things. Yeah. What? Okay, what in the heck is going on with these lyrics? Who is Galena? Is that someone I'm supposed to know what that is? I know it's not Galinda from the from Wicked. Galena is something she needs to, you know, make it through the night. She has some sort of secret and she needs Gal Galena to like comfort her, it sounds like. Girl, what is happening with these lyrics? Got to keep my head up. That transition. She lost Galena? I blame the divine. She used to be mine. I love this verse. This one's catchy too. I love this chorus. This kind of has more of a, a bright feeling to it than some of the other songs so far. It kind of takes me back to some of her really bright poppy songs, um, mainly in collection one. There's like, hello, a bright little poppy boppy number. And this is kind of like in a weird way reminding me of that. Although it's it's not nearly as bright as that song. But oh, this is one of the boppiest and the catchiest so far. I really love this chorus, it's just really fun to listen to. I literally have no idea who Galena is. I tried to Google it, <laughs> didn't come up with anything, so. She's just serving me like the dark sense that I feel like I've needed my entire life. I'm so proud of Ali X. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Baby, my, my child. Oh, I love this bridge. might be about a doll. She keeps sleeping in her bed. Her lips part the tiniest smile. So that makes me think it could be about a doll. Like a very pretty, one of those like old timey dolls. Cause Galena also sounds like it could be the name of a really old, like ancient antique doll. <laughs> Galena, wake up. Galena, just wake up. <laughs> Oh, I love that ending. Oh, that ending was one of my favorite parts of the song. Oh my gosh, like it really is such a dynamic sound from her. It's not just like the same synth being recorded over a loop, you know? Like that one, it really started out super bright, at least brighter than the music that I've heard so far on this album. But then by the end of the song, you know, this other sound came in that it sounded really dark and it sounded like it kind of got a little bit darker through the song, just like in John and Jonathan. <laughs> I don't know. I think that's really cool. I'm really proud of her already just for this album. You know, I'm just like, go Allie X. I think it's just so badass that she wrote and produced this album herself. Hardware software. <laughs> I love that, it's so sparkly. <laughs> Oh, 
this is weird AF, but I kind of like it. Like the production literally sounds like a computer. This is a song I'm not even gonna attempt to understand what she's talking about. Like, I just think it's above my pay grade. That made no sense because I'm not getting paid for this, but it's kind of just out of my league. It's <laughs> not something I'm gonna mess with today. There's been an abrupt change where like she's whispering everything she's saying now. Cause she was yelling at the beginning of this album. She came out screaming, but now we're kind of getting this softer, darker, like she's whispering in my ear. I have to like really intently listen to everything she's saying. so funny. Ali X did talk about this song. She said, this was not something I thought about intentionally. I just sort of improvised it. I imagine the words came out because I had been spending so much time in front of a computer. I just remember doing that silly rap and cracking myself up by myself. I love that. I love that energy of just like being by yourself and like making something that you, that brought you joy in the moment. I love that energy. Finding that joy in the process rather than I was making myself miserable trying to make a song that everyone else liked. See, it's always like changing the synths and stuff, which I... This literally just feels like she was messing around in the studio. Her cat like ran across this, the synths, like the synthesizer. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That was just about as weird as I could have expected it to be after hearing the title of the song. But I really liked it. I don't know, it was really cool. Definitely different, definitely unlike any of the other songs thus far, um, but I kind of dug it for that reason. The next one is Black Eye. Yeah, we'll breeze through this and then go You Slept On Me, which I don't know, I have a feeling she could be calling out people who sleep on her music. <laughs> I forgot how Halloween this immediately makes me feel. Please. Is that an organ? She brought the beat in. Oh, she really did. This is already one of my favorites. This is already one of the ones that I would consider the most the best. I, like, I don't know. This is just so freaking interesting and cool to me. I feel mad. I'm all worked up. This beat is hard, but not hard enough. Oh my gosh, wait. Spent your coins on a counterfeit. She got a rainbow hair. She got a BB lift. That's sounding like she is referring to another artist. I guess you never learned about quality. I feel bad for you. I feel bad for me. She's literally calling people out for sleeping on her music, which is exactly what I thought. But at the same time, I expected to be wrong. Because I was thinking that was way too tongue in cheek for her to actually do it. It is kind of iconic that she's actually doing that. I don't love the concept of like, you know, bringing down the other artists. Cause like, I mean, I don't know who she's referring to. Like who has rainbow hair and a BB lift. I don't love the concept of like bringing down other artists in the process. I guess that's the one problem I have with it. Like just because someone goes and sees another artist doesn't mean that that artist isn't also talented. It depends who you see. Time to get down. And propose. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Is this real? I think I have to like stand up in admiration right now. Me, me, 
I think this is one of the best songs on the album. First of all, she did speak about this specifically. She said it's about a tweet that said, y'all are sleeping on AliEx. Apparently that's a, you know, a tweet that she's gotten a lot. She thought she'd just have a bit of fun with that concept. Can we talk about the second verse? I held my tongue for about long enough. It's about damn time that I spoke up. I'm an icon, honey. This isn't a chore. Oh my gosh, like this is so freaking funny. Like this is just so funny. I mean, it's funny, but it's also like true, Loki. I need to make money, so give me yours. <laughs> You missed my debut, then my renaissance. She really said you were gone for all of it. She literally said set the alarm, like wake up. Now I'm a modern bitch and I'm getting tough. Better make it up kids, enough's en I have never felt so grateful to have her stampede all over my, my face right now. This is my favorite part of the album so far. Like I cannot get over this second verse. You missed my debut, collection one. Then my renaissance, collection two. You missed my late romantic, super sunset. My verdict, oh France, Cape God. Like what? in the heck is happening? Oh my gosh, this is such a funny song. This is the song right here that I literally think should be like studied by scientists. I don't know, this is such a good song too. It's so fun, it's so catchy. <laughs> oh my God, these synths. Okay, this is my favorite synth so far. I think this is one of the best synths that we've gotten. I should be ranking the synths during this. No, this is the best song I've ever heard. <laughs> I didn't think that anything could overtake off with her tits, but I think that is my favorite song so far. I am just in awe right now. It was so tongue in cheek while also still making great points about her status in the industry. It's one of those songs that feels like, you know, the artist is like breaking the fourth wall and talking to you about how they really feel. Obviously it was drama, dramatized. It was dramatized. I do not know how she's gonna follow up that song. This is kind of starting with a similar vibe to the last one. This kind of has a grand feeling to it with that synth. Almost like a ballroom feel. I don't know if that makes sense. And we're, okay, we're screaming again. Are you gonna do that note live? <laughs> That one fully just felt like a bit of a palate cleanser after the last track. Um, I liked it, but I wasn't like, it wasn't my favorite one on the album. I was kind of just taking a moment to like recover after hearing, after hearing you slept on me. The lyrics were pretty straightforward and pretty easy to digest and understand basically about not wanting to show your emotions because it can be seen as weakness or people can be like turned off by that. So just keep smiling and have people think that you're not you're not as sad as you really are because your heart has turned black and you can't feel the emotions the same. face that makes your grandma want to smile. I don't have the milk that makes me want to have a child. So that means, what? I don't have the disposition for drinks with the girls. Okay, that's so real. I don't sing for straight men because they just ruin the world.
Want to be a good daughter, but I push my mom away. Want to be a good patient, but my doctor makes me pay. Girl, what? Want to save the baby, but I throw away the bath. My body's weak. My mind is bleak, but there's one thing that I have. Staying power. Wow. Like, girl, I think you have more than that. Like, don't be too harsh on yourself. I age like wine. <laughs> Vibes. Oh my gosh, she knows. She's so self-aware, like she knows her music is good. She knows people are sleeping on her and I kind of love her for that. I'm still not over, you slept on me. I like the cadence of this part a lot. Oh, I love. Love that age like wine. <laughs> Some long instrumental breaks in these songs. I wasn't crazy about the chorus of that one. It got really repetitive. It just like wasn't my favorite part of the song, but I did really like the verses. Staying power, I, I don't really know what she meant. I mean, I think she was referring to, you know, kind of keeping going, possibly with her music, like keeping up with writing music and releasing it despite all the obstacles around her. Yeah, I don't know if that's true, but that's just like where my mind went. Yeah, probably not my favorite overall, to be honest. Um, but I like the sense. I always like the sense. But we are on the last track. It is called Truly Dreams. Really have no idea what to expect with this one. Again, like the way she's singing is really reminding me of like collection one and that higher register of her voice. And obviously she taps into that register on this album, like she screams and stuff like that. But this is like staying in that upper place, which I don't feel like we've gotten as much of on this album. But I keep dreaming. never die. I'm nobody, I can never die. Oh, that kind of reminds me of her career once again. She might be referring to if I have no power in the industry, like I'm not an artist that people, a lot of people know about and a lot of people listen to. I'm not one of the famous popular artists. I can't die because I was never known of. Oh, but she's like, I'll keep dreaming. If it's not enough, then I'll just keep my hopes and dreaming. Oh, that's kind of really deep when you think about it. Like a lot of the lyrics on this album are really making me think deeply. I do think this is one of her deepest albums. She did say that this was going to be one of her most personal bodies of work. I think her most personal, and I fully think that that's true. A lot of her other songs and stuff are, they're just not this personal at all. If you think back to her other albums, it's almost insane how much more personal this is. There is no one but Ali X that could have made this record. There were some songs on her other albums that are just very generalized. You could listen and picture anyone. With this, it's like, this is Ali X. Yeah, this is definitely, definitely her most personal album. As well as, I think, being her deepest album, which kind of goes hand in hand because the more personal you get, I think the more deep you get. Like, I did not think about her lyrics this intense with her other albums. Weird World. So it's kind of like a full circle moment. Weird World. And this one does feel dreamy and bright. Again, kind of going back to that bright sound. Like this is a, a total 180 from Black Eye. It feels dreamy. It feels like, you know, you're kind of dreaming with her. And I've always said this, but like artists rarely end a record on a negative, hopeless type of song. Most all albums end on a song that has some element of hope. And this definitely is the case. I mean, this song, like I'll hold on to my dreams, you know, even though I may not be this big artist that everyone looks up to and talks about and like is respected in the industry in the same way that mainstream artists are, I'm still gonna keep doing what I love. I'm still gonna keep dreaming and, and keep going forward. I'm not gonna let that stop me. You know, it is a song about having power, having staying power and having 
longevity as well. At the end of the day, commercial success or not, like I, I'm here, Ali X, and I'm listening to you and I wanna thank you for your, your music. Yeah, I'm glad that she is continuing to make music even if people are sleeping on her. Dreams never die. Simple, but it's true. I'd say I like that. I like that song. It, it's one I'm probably gonna have to spend a minute with to like fully acclimate to. I think it just threw me off a little bit. Going from that really heavy, dark sound all the way to like the bright, poppier sound. Wow, I feel like I have a lot to say and like reflect on because that was just like very interesting to me. First of all, I definitely think this is her most personal album. Exactly as she said, I'm gonna echo what she said and agree with her. This is so much more personal so much deeper than any of her other albums. And thinking about it, it's almost night and day with how personal this is in comparison to those albums. We started with Weird World and I feel like that was kind of her bringing us into this album being like, hey, this is gonna be weird. It's gonna be personal. I'm gonna let you into my world through these songs. I'm really gonna let you in. You know, I I'm really gonna let you into like some of my deepest thoughts and experiences. Then we go into Off With Her Tits, which is, you know, Body dysmorphia, I think. Um, John and Jonathan, her struggles with believing what her fans say versus maybe what she thinks about herself. Galena, I don't know who Galena is, but it sounded like she was trying to find comfort in something outside of herself. And You Slept On Me, you know, it may be a very funny and tongue in cheek song, but I definitely think it kind of reveals her heart a lot behind it and like feeling frustrated that she keeps working toward this goal or this dream and it just never comes to fruition. And that is such a frustrating place to be. And it is so frustrating when you were trying to like do things and like make your dreams come true and forces outside your control are preventing you from doing so. Like she can't force people to stream her music. She can't force radio stations to go play her songs. Staying power, you know, she's like, well, I'm gonna, you know, the last two songs were kind of those hopeful songs. Like I'm gonna hold on to what I have, which is this staying power, which is this, this dream. You know, I have this dream, I'm holding on to it. I'm gonna keep going. It is like the resilience anthem. So it's definitely a whole journey like into her world and like, yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I'm still kind of thinking about the album title and what that means and how that correlates. It could very well be a tie-in to fame as well. Like, she doesn't have a face. You know, you think of a household name, a person who has a face in the industry, like Taylor Swift, Beyonce. So maybe she's saying that she doesn't have a face in the industry. She's the girl with no face. So that's kind of how I would interpret the album title after pondering it a bit more in this moment. Because honestly, that just dawned on me that that might be one of the meanings. But yeah, I don't know. I think it's a really cool album. I really love the sound of it. I really loved her experimenting with this sound because I think it's really cool. It's unlike anything I have ever like really listened to. Just the amount of synths, the dynamic production. I don't know. It's, it's different than a lot of the stuff that I'm listening to. So I think it's really unique and really fun and really cool. Overall, I think it's a pretty strong body of work. I mean, she did that. And especially considering that she wrote it all herself and she produced it all herself. I have so much respect for that. And I'm excited to spend more time with it because I definitely feel like it's a lot to process. This is my album ranking. Should I decide to rank this album? What are some of my favorites? Some of my least favorites? Always open to change and evolve over time and feel free to disagree with me. I'm excited about this album and about this artist and I hope that she gets some recognition in the industry that she greatly deserves. And Ali X, if you're watching this, I really like your music. I think you're really cool and please reach out to me. No, I'm just kidding, but. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, for being here. Please like and subscribe. It would really support the channel. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.